So hello, I'm Pauline and today I will talk about a study carried in Galway Bay in Ireland about spatial distribution and the impact of a tremotid parasite on three snail species, so which are Luterina oxysata, Luterina saxatilis and Nucella lapidus. So first, why should we study marine gastropods? Because marine gastropods um, con are, uh, control the nutrient cycling, uh, for example, by their diet, by the detrivorous diet, like Litorina sexatidis, and uh, the herbivorous one, like Litorina obtusata, uh, can control the algae expansion cover. Also because they are prey for important predators, uh, such as shore crabs, bird, fishes, and other marine gastropods. And also because when they die, their empty shell is used by other species, such as hermit crab. And finally, because they provide new substrates for other species, such as, such as barnacles. <laughs> and so, uh, why should we, now we know a little, uh, little bit more about uh, the, import of, uh, the importance of marine gastropods. So, why should we care about their trimmated parasites? So, trimmated parasites use a wide range of organisms during their life cycle. So, um, in the first, also in Typically, in marine gastropods, they develop into a cerca, into sporocyst, into a cercaria, and during this free swimming stage, they nourish on the um, digestive gland and gonad of the snail, uh, which leads to um, uh, permanent castration and uh, disrupted feeding abilities. So, actually, trimmated parasites can control the dynamic of the po host population and of the ecological role of their host if this one are engineering species. Uh, also, um, trimmated parasites can influence the movement patterns and the masking abilities of their host to enhance their um, transmission through an increase in pressure. pressure. For example, like the, I mean, the infected snail will be, when they are infected, they will tend to move more towards uh, fishes, uh, internal shell crustaceans and shorebirds, which are the next host of the parasites. So, as you can see. So, our research questions, uh, we were interested in, um, in studying how the focal species were uh, specially distributed on the shore. And if actually the, this, this distribution varied uh, with the trimmated parasite prevalence, and if trimmated parasites infected the reproductive capacity of their host. And we also did um, a behavior study uh, to test if the infected and uninfected Litorina obtusata have um, different color choices, color preferences. So we, sampling, uh, we sampled four sites in the Galway Bay. And uh, so it was quite easy. We just actually put three bell transects from the high algae line time to the splash zone near the reaching the Nucilla lapidus population. And uh, we put, for each bell transect, we put two quadrat per zonation, so a zonation is this horizontal bond. And we collected uh, all the focal species in each quadrat. Uh, back to the laboratory, uh, we assessed if there was an infection statue by observing this little like sausage-like under the sterile microscope. So this is the porosis and one porosis in this under microscope and in the porosis you have several cercaria. So to assess the genus level of the trimmated parasite, we have to observe the porosis and the cercaria under a sterile uh, microscope. Uh, then for the reproduction capacity, so we assessed if there was uh, if the penis uh, was the, the penis lens was different in infected and uninfected snail. So under sterile microscope, for example, we assessed this as a micro penis. So actually, this is this looks like a kind of immature shape compared to a normal penis. Uh, no, uh, we assessed also the reproductive capacity of. Uh, Litorina saxatilis, only this species, because it's the only Litorina species with a noviviparous mode. So it's a species which carry um, its embryos in one broad pouch under the shell. So we just observe if the, snail, if the females have embryos in, in their broad pouch under a stereo microscope. 
and concerning the behavior study. So we've we created one wheel with rocky shore colors and another wheel more has a control with um, warm yellow color and a green cool color. And we put each individual in the center of the wheel. And after a two minute period observation, we recorded where the snail was, on which color the snail was settled. So now concerning the statistics. So we've used a, a key test, a key square test, to see if the tree focal species have a heterogeneous distribution on the shore. Uh, we did a variance mean ratio to, see, to observe the spatial distribution of the infected snail only. Um, we used a generalized linear model to test the parasite infection in response to the following predictors, quadrats, length and sex, and we did another we did two other GLM uh, tests to test if the presence of a micropenis was linked to infection status lens and uh, presence of embryo with infection status lens as well. And we use a Spearman correlation to test if the prevalence of parasites of infected um, individual uh, was, linked to the was linked to the prevalence of females with embryos and uh, so across the four sites, so we have four dots, and we did another spearman correlation to test if there was any relationship between the um, prevalence of males with some micropenis and the prevalence of uh, infected males. Uh, and so we used also another key square test to test if there was any differences between, in color choice between the infected and uninfected littering up to set up. So our results, so the key-square test, um, the calculated key-square were always greater than the critical key-square, um, than the critical key-square. So uh, actually the three focal species have a, a heterogeneous distribution on the show. So what we found is that Littorina saxatis was mostly found at the upper part of the show, which is not really surprising because this species um, is very, can withstand with higher temperature and desiccation stress through physiological and biochemical adaptations. And we mostly found Littorina obtusata at the middle part of the show and lower part of the show because uh, actually its partial distribution was related on with, the species, with the algae species on which they graze and because they are limited upper show uh, by abiotic factors. And we found a uh, new cellular apilus, mostly lower part of the show, uh, because this species is very sensitive to desiccation, and because its presence is related to uh, Balanus balanoides population on which they graze. So this is not really surprising, because actually in intertidal zones, they are uh, usually, organs are really adapted to a specific band, horizontal band. So uh, no, um, we didn't find any traumatized parasite in New Cellular Apilus, so we couldn't conduct further investigation on, um, in the species. So now concerning the uh, vertical distribution um, and the uh, parasite prevalence, so I will focus at one site, Rainville, which was one site with a really high traumatized par parasite prevalence. So as you can see on the first column, so this is this for Litorina saxatulis species. So as you can see, all the infected snail, so the red part, are aggregated at the highest uh, part of the upper shore. And our GLM results indicated us that the individual, so the individual here, the individual at the quadrat three and quadrat two uh, were more uh, unlikely, unlikely to host parasites. And the GLM results indicated us that the um, the bigger individual were more likely to host parasites. But the, actually, at the quadrat three, we have uh, the bigger individual. So the, the parasite prevalence should be very high here, but it's not the case. It's at this quadrat. So it doesn't really make sense, but when um, we know that traumatized parasites can infect the movement of their host, it makes sense. So one hypothesis would be that actually the, the snail become infected at the, at the upper part of the show, so this part, and they all tend to aggregate at the highest zonation of the show uh, to be more exposed to the next host of the parasite. And actually, uh, this is supported because in this individual, what we found, um, uh, we found a traumatized parasite from the 
uh, Microphallis genus and uh, Marichema genus, which uh, respectively use shorebirds and isopods as next host. And actually, uh, this quadrat the quadrat one was near uh, the high algae line tide, which shows many isopods, and near a bush with, uh, where we observe many shorebirds. So, no, uh, so we are still at the Renville site, and uh, I will talk about Lichorina obtusata, so this species. So when we look at the density map, we can see the same, like all the infected individuals in red are aggregated at the lowest uh, zonation of the shore. And our GLM results are, um, have indicated that the bigger ways the individual, the bigger ways their probability to be infected. But actually, one actually is there because the density of, of uh, snails is really high. One hypothesis would be more that it's a density dependent aggregation, which means like because there is many hosts available, there is more, uh, you know, there is more stremated parasite infection. And of course, obviously, this donation uh, benefits the parasites because uh, the trematide we found here are from the podocotyl genus and microphallus genus, which use uh, shore crabs, fishes, and grammarous intertidal crustaceans as next host. And a note concerning the parasites' uh, incidence on the reproductive capacity. So at Renville, so the, really, the highly impacted site, what we found, uh, our GLM uh, results have indicated us that the males uh, were more likely to have uh, a parasites when they were infected. So, to have a, sorry, a micropenis when they were infected. So, um, actually, this is just due to a side effect of uh, gonad consumption and digestive uh, gland consumption by the parasite. And so, no concerning uh, the fecundity of Lichorina saxatilis. So at the, um, f like the GLM results have indicated us that at Barna, so the lowest impact infected site by tomato parasites, and at uh, Silverstrand and Tawin, the intermediate infected site, the bigger were the females, the bigger were the, the probability to find embryos in their broad posh. But actually, Renville, so the really highly, the highly impacted site by tomato parasites, did not, the females did not follow these patterns. So uh, what we think is that uh, one hypothesis is that actually at this really infected site, the females have embryos in their broad pouch as lower size compared to non-infected site. And this could, be, um, this could be a pattern actually to counteract the castrative effect of the trematode parasite over the population. Um, no concerning the uh, Parasite, the uh, impact of uh, infection, parasite infection on uh, Litorina obtusata and its color preferences. So the calculated chi-square was always, was always uh, lower than the critical chi-square. So actually there was no difference in color shows between infected and uninfected individuals. But however, we still depict, uh, we still highlight some trends. For example, in the rocky shore, palette wheel, we observe that the, um, all the individual moved uh, to the brown color. So actually just because it looks like the, um, uh, the color algae on which they graze. And for the um, warm and, the warm and um, cool, uh, cool wheel, uh, we observe that the individual always moved towards the yellow color. So one hypothesis would be that because the yellow color better scatters the light, Lichorina obtusata might be a positively photo axis, which means that move towards the stimulus of light. But this has to be investigated, of, sure, of course. And so the conclusion, so what we found is that the three focal species have a different distribution of the show because it's in tertidal uh, area, so each individual are very, each uh, species are, is really adapted to a specific burn. And uh, we found that uh, the spatial actually patterns vary uh, for infected snails with an aggregation of the infected snails as well. Uh, we found that infected males were more likely to have a micropenis in really infected population from really infected population. And we 
uh, there is a possible reduction of the age of maturity for Litorina saxatilis uh, from the highly infected population. And Litorina obtusata shows a color preference for brown color. So the recommendations uh, would be that to assess, um, to better assess the trimetal infection for Nucella apilus for further studies, we should really focus on the lower part of the show to increase the sampling size of uh, this species and also to accurately assess the, trimeter, uh, the reproductive effort um, of Lichonia successivis females. Uh, it should be better to, re to lens and count the number of embryos in their brood posh. And that is, well, thank you for your attention. Um.